So for my daughter's fifth birthday last year, my wife and I took her to Disney World, and she only wanted to do one thing. She wanted to meet Minnie Mouse. Um, so we were there for about four and a half days, and we we're walking around. We're going from Magic Kingdom to Epcot. We don't see Minnie Mouse. Day two, we don't see Minnie Mouse. Day three, we don't see Minnie Mouse. It is the last day uh, being in Disney World, and I'm starting to realize that my daughter, for some strange reason, may not actually meet the character Minnie Mouse. So I decided to buy my daughter a stuffed Minnie Mouse. And my wife says, how are we gonna get this back on the plane? I'm like, I don't know. I just, I couldn't let my daughter have this experience and not meet Minnie Mouse. So she's walking around with the stuffed Minnie Mouse. Um, we are walking through Epcot. And then while she's holding the stuffed Minnie Mouse, my daughter sees Minnie Mouse walking down this corridor. She throws the stuffed Minnie Mouse down on the ground, pushes my big self out of the way because she's going to run to embrace Minnie Mouse. My daughter realized that while she was holding this substitute that she was getting ready to encounter the real thing. And when she realized the potential of her encounter with the real thing, the substitute was no longer necessary. In Mark 13, this is known as the Olivet Discourse, and Jesus uh, makes reference to something that the prophet Daniel tells us is coming. He talks about the abomination of desolation. And he brings this up because at the beginning of that chapter, the disciples are saying, man, this temple is so beautiful. Look at how wonderful it is. Look at these stones. And Jesus essentially says to them, look, um, as beautiful as you think this temple is, one day it's going to be gone. It won't be any more. Sometimes our hearts can become attached to the things that actually point to the thing. What Jesus is confronting is the fact that the disciples and the people of Israel had made the temple an idol in its beauty and in its strength and in its design. They longed for and worshiped and celebrated and honored the thing that pointed to God more than they did the Lord. Jesus said the day is going to come when this temple will not be there. And what will be left? What will you have? What will you worship? What will you honor when the thing that points to the thing is no longer in front of you? I believe that this fast is an opportunity for us to remember what really matters, for us to redirect our hearts away from songs, away from the way we're used to worshiping, away from our traditions, away from our images and our idols. Put them back on where we really should be focused, which is our God. And when you've seen and encountered God, you don't need the imitation anymore. You don't need the thing that points to the thing. Let's recenter our hearts around the Lord today. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to connect with you. You are God and God alone, and we worship and honor your holy name. Help our hearts to break free of every idol, every false thing, of every thing that we've turned into the main thing, but it's not you, so that we can worship and honor and glorify you and experience true freedom in Jesus' name. Amen.